game. Hope everybody enjoys the spring game for Trey Millard, for Teddy Lehman, for Jessica Cootie. I'm Chad McKee. Enjoy some Oklahoma football in the springtime, and we'll talk to you next time, everybody. It is a beautiful Saturday in Norman, Oklahoma. Blue skies, Owen Field, Gaylord family, Oklahoma Memorial Stadium. And it is football time in Oklahoma as the crowds have gathered for the 2021 Oklahoma Spring Game. Hi, everybody. Toby Rowland with you alongside Sooner great Dusty Dvoracek. We are thrilled that you are with us today. We are thrilled that we are here. No spring game last year, Dusty. It's just great to be back. Great to have spring football. I know the players, the coaches, the fans, everyone's excited. We have a nice atmosphere here in the stadium for some of these players. They've never played in a spring game before. And when you think of the momentum from last season, the way the Sooner football team closed out on yet another Big 12 championship, and then wrapped the Florida Gators, a lot of excitement heading into 2021 for this particular team. And Mother Nature has smiled upon us. It's a nice day. It was raining here in Norman yesterday, but it's nice today. A lot of excitement, and one of the reasons is because of the balance that fans and pundits feel like this Oklahoma football team has going into this year. There's no doubt. And think about it. I mean, the offense we've known has been prolific since Lincoln Riley stepped foot in Norman, Oklahoma. But now, it's not just about the offense. They've got that for sure, but it's about this defense as well. Year three of Alex Grinch. Year one was good. Year two was even better. And year three, we expect something special here in Norman. When you look at all three position groups, the defensive line, all kinds of depth. Can't wait to see what Perrion Winfrey has in store. This linebacking crew, year number two. I know Deshaun White's really broke out this spring and looking to make a splash. And this secondary, man, they are filled with all kinds of length, athleticism. That particular group just looks different than it has in years past. He gets excited when he starts to talk about defense, that's for sure. All eyes on the defense, all eyes on the new guys today, but as always, all eyes on the quarterbacks, and it starts with maybe the Heisman front runner going into this year, Mr. Spencer Rattler. we got to talk about quarterbacks. That's <laughs> right. They have to have their day as well. Look, he's been phenomenal since he ste stepped on foot here at Norman, and last season, I thought he got better and better better matured throughout the course of the season the arm talent is off the charts can make every single throw he's put on a little bit of weight worked on his physicality and i can't wait to see the command and control he has for this football team here today and we get our first look at the five star caleb williams today as well Yeah, and he's the full package well built well put together can spin it as well going to see him move around a little bit lincoln riley praised his ability to pick up this offense. Still not a finished package, but you can see the talent oozing off of him. Can't wait to see what he looks like running the second group. Keep an eye out for Super Mario today coming your way as well. We'll take an opening timeout. When we come back, we'll focus in on one of the potential position battles in front of us here today. It's the OU Spring Game presented by OU Health. And your toes down there, Jess. We're going to be coming to you a lot today. We got celebrities, dignitaries, special guests down on the field with, with us. For this one, it should be fun. Here's a look at our starting lineup for the offense, we think, brought to you by Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola is an official partner of the Oklahoma Sooners. Uh, a little hard to know for sure, but Dusty, we expect, we know exactly who the starting quarterback is going to be at least. I think so. I think it's pretty <laughs> safe to say Mr. Rattler will be taking the first snaps at quarterback. What a great freshman season he had. A lot of people have him as the front runner for the Heisman Trophy with good reason with the way he concluded last season. Going to see some new weapons at his disposal here this afternoon. What do you think about the scoring system? Uh, I love if I'm a defensive player and I've got to lead, man, right? I, I like that a lot. It's your job not to mess it up at this point. Got to go chase him down. Gabe Burkage, we will have a kickoff here. Gabe Burkage points right, points left. Total leather in the 2021 Oklahoma spring game is underway. And the return by Todd Hudson to the near sidelines before he stacked up around the 31-yard line. And that's where Lincoln Riley's offense will go to work. Well, we broke it down in the pregame show, but there's a lot of knowns here. 
We know the quarterback. We know Marvin Mims and several of the guys that will be the big-time weapons, the key weapons. The offensive line, though, is very much a question mark going into this year. No doubt, especially we've already talked about that center position. Looks like Andrew Rain's going to get the first crack at it at center. But a lot of guys playing multiple positions, trying to see exactly where they fit. A lot of position flexibility up front. Spencer Rattler's first pass is caught on the perimeter. Nice moves and a first down. And that's Eric Gray, the new guy from Tennessee, the running back, who was used frequently as a pass catcher with the Volunteers. And he makes the first grab of the day. I had a chance to call Tennessee Texas A&M last year, and I love this guy on tape. I thought he was Tennessee's best player. He's got excellent vision, and you see there his ability to catch the football. Outstanding. Rattler to the air again, and there's another of the new guys, Mario Williams, the true freshman, the five-star out of Florida. And Spencer Rattler introducing all of us to some of the new faces immediately. And with Mario Williams, it's crazy quickness. His ability to put his foot in the ground, change directions, shake coverage, been exceptional here so far. Eric Gray, the handoff up the middle, crosses the 50-yard line and the State of Oklahoma logo. That is the traditional paintwork of recent years. And he gets the first down for the offense. Shane Witter on the tackle. Good to see a little movement there in the interior of the defense, the offensive line for Oklahoma. Short yardage situation. They get that push and get just enough to move the sticks. Exactly what Coach Beanbow is looking for there in the interior. Jeremiah Hall into the game for the first time for Oklahoma. He's lined up tight end right side and a play action for Spencer Rattler. He's looking deep, plenty of protection and flush to the sidelines where he'll be touched down at the 50 yard line. Good protection or good coverage. Take a look at the defensive starters today for Alex Grinch. Also brought to you by Coca-Cola. A lot of experience there, Ted. Dusty. No, it's okay. It's, it, used, to used to working to with radio. Teddy. No used doubt. to working with Teddy. I'm sorry. And it looks to me like so far we've got a lot of the twos in against the one offense. So it looks like that's how they're going to do it. Two defense against one offense and vice versa the next way. Harry Gray, the handoff, plows ahead to the 45-yard line. A gain of about five. Well, there's been a lot of praise for the Tennessee transfer wearing the number zero there for the Sooners in the spring. Huge addition, Toby, in the offseason. Tough to tackle. He has what I like to call contact courage, not afraid to lower the shoulder, but excellent vision can avoid contact as well. See if Alex dials up some pressure on third down. First third down. Rattler's throw is in and out of the hands of Jeremiah Hall. There's Rattler's first incompletion. Caleb Kelly in coverage. It'll bring up fourth down. Really good protection there for Spencer Rattler. Just a four-man rush. The pass that we typically see Jeremiah Hall catch. And Lincoln's going to elect to go for it here. A fourth down stop here. Would be three points for the defense, who already leads 21-0. Rattler takes a deep shot. Far sidelines on fourth down, and it's broken up. Looking for Mario Williams. And Kendall Dennis there to pull the football away. Interesting decision on fourth and short, but they want to go for... As you called earlier, Super Mario, that speed down the field, really quality coverage by the redshirt freshman, Kendall Dennis, running stride for stride, and William just unable to come down with that completion. Big win there to start things off for Alex Gritch's defense. Three points for the defense. That pushes their lead to 24 nothing. And now I think we will get our first look at five-star quarterback Caleb Williams. And he's going to be taking on the one Sooner defense, Toby, the, the list we showed you a second ago. As we can see, Perrion Winfrey, Josh Ellison, Nick Benito and company out there up front. Going to be doing all they can to disrupt and put some, dis some uh, stress on the uh, true freshman quarterback. And really his first time here on Owen Field in front of a large crowd. Mikey Henderson going to be a part of the offensive package who has been moved 
from H back to running back this year. He's wearing the number three there to the left of Caleb Williams. And the Owen Field crowd gives an ovation to their new five-star quarterback. Williams starts with a keeper around the left side. Big yardage. All the way out to the 48-yard line with his feet, Caleb Williams. Well, nice inside zone read. Defensive end Nick Benito, the rush collapses. Quality block on the safety on the perimeter, and you see the speed there from the true freshman. Nice play to get things started for his Sooner career. First and 10 for Williams. He'll keep it again on the zone read, maneuvering up the middle, and they're not going to allow the blue jerseys to be tackled. So he's touched down after a gain of five. Didn't make the play, but you saw the penetration from Perrion Winfrey. A lot of what we saw last season, he was such a key addition. The Juco transfer, such an impact inside. Real, I thought it was a smart decision to come back for another year and continue on the good play he put out there last year. Second and five, Williams puts it in the air for the first time, and a catch is made. Just shy of the first down. That's a familiar name to Owen Fields. Jackson Sumlin, the son of former Sooner assistant coach. Kevin Sumlin, of course, former head coach at Texas A&M at Arizona. A nice little quick timing pattern. No, no reads, just quick, easy. Get it out of your hand. On time and in rhythm to Jackson Sumlin. Now you see all the returning talent for this Oklahoma offense this year. On third and one, the handoff is to Marcus Major up the middle, and that's enough to move the chains. You need a couple of yards. That's the body you want. Marcus Major, big, physical, thick build, and you see him lower the shoulder and pound his way to move the chains. I thought he really broke out, Toby, in that Cotton Bowl. Yeah. Had his most memorable game as a Sooner there at the end of the season. 46-yard touchdown run against Florida. Had 110 yards in that game against the Gators. But the offense in need of some points. They trail 24-0 on the move under the guidance of Caleb Williams. Play action. Quick toss out near sideline. And the catch is made. Devin Staten with the grab. Well, you love to see that throw. That's all the way outside the numbers. Far hash outside the numbers. And it's on time and on target for Caleb Williams. Excellent start for the true freshman. Second and one. Keeper again, Caleb Williams on the zone read. Has it up for the first down. David Aguebu tags him down at the 28-yard line. Take a look at the defensive returners brought to you by the Trails Golf Club in Norman, where you'll experience everything you love about golf and more after this play. Marcus Major, no gain. And there's the depth you've been talking about, Dusty. Experience right. Absolutely. Depth. So many guys coming back from last season. Really, I mean, Ronnie Perkins, he departs from the front. You've got Trey Norwood, Trey Brown gone as well. But aside from that, all these guys back. And they had so many other players kind of filter in to go along with the new faces. I just think depth at all three levels of this defense and a better overall understanding for these returners in year three of this system and scheme. Second and nine. Quick pass across the middle. Deflected. And incomplete, in and out of the hands of Sumlin. It'll bring up third and long. A little bit behind his intended target. You'd like to see Caleb Williams put that ball more out in front where his pass catcher can catch it and pick up yards after the grab. Slightly behind him, but one I'm sure Jackson Sumlin wishes he could have back and make a nice grab. Third and long. Four wide receiver look for Williams, who's back to pass. Dumped down to Major. He's got a ways to go. And the defense corrals him after a short game. And it looks like Lincoln Riley will try for a long field goal here. Conservative play call there on third and long. Just a little swing screen. Well read by the Oklahoma defense. Pursuit outstanding there by 33 Marcus Stripling. And number eight, Perrion Winfrey. You love to see that. The defensive lineman getting out of the stack, getting to the football to prevent the first down and create a field goal attempt. 
44-yard try for Gabe Burkich. Made 20 of 26 last year from the right hash. Trying to put the offense on the board. It's got the distance, and Burkich is good. 8.24 to go here in the first half of the 2021 spring game. Defense on top, 24 to 3. We'll take a timeout. Today's Sooner Football broadcast brought to you by OU Health. The future of health is here. Super Bowl champion, a national champion, the Orange Bowl MVP and a broadcaster extraordinaire, Spencer Tillman, Dusty, in the booth with us. How about great. this? Uh, fantastic. Great to have you, Spencer. Dusty, good to be here. So good to be here as well. I, I was always told, take what you hear, divide it by two, then you're halfway close to the truth. So <laughs> I'll take it, though. I, I think I'm spitting all facts. <laughs> uh, this is a comfortable spot. You had a couple of OU games last year, so yeah. you're, you're familiar with these guys. Yeah, you know, but I tell you, but all the things I'm focused on is who is going to replace Creed. I mean, to me, they've got a nice little competition uh, you know, context there. We'll see how that works out. But, man, you got a three-year starter in that position that's so smart. He's got great uh, skills. You know, maybe I think he's a natural probably guard at the next level. He can still play center at that level as well. But uh, I think who gets that position is going to be where my eyes are going to be trained. And it's, I was talking earlier, just the verbiage, the communication. Oh, yeah. And Bill Beatonbow puts so much on his center. So we focus on what we see physically. But it's also the mental aspect of the game that whoever wins this job is going to have to show and prove that they can handle. Yeah, everybody's so spread out. Again, in the ground game, it's not nearly as much as a factor, but in the throw game, when you're expecting protection, you got to have guys that can identify where you need to slide that protection and where to deploy people. And I always to look, Dusty, see it as a, a three-pronged approach for a quarterback and a center. When you get to the line of scrimmage, you're going to def define where the threats are, and then you're going to call the play to give you the best chance to get in that, uh, to, to beat those threats, and then you got to execute the play. And the center plays a huge role in all three of those parts. That was not an insignificant carry there as Kennedy Brooks gets his first uh, tote back on the field for the first time in a couple of years. Obviously, he opted out of last season and a big addition back to this football team this year. Rattler takes a shot toward the near sideline looking for Hazelwood on third and long. Incomplete, and so far the offense not getting much done as they trail it. 24 to 3. Your thoughts on Spencer Rattler? I like him a lot, but you know what? I'll, I'll tell you, Kate, it, it really impressed me. I was in Georgia when he was in that camp a while back. It's been a while ago, but man, I'll tell you, he is a skill set that is extraordinary, and when you have somebody that's going to pressure quarterback, we know that Spencer's paid his dues, and with the red shirt and everything, he's the, he's the heir apparent, obviously, and obviously the starter, but man, uh, I was really impressed with Williams. Let's go downstairs. Jessica Cootie's got a couple of special guests. Hey, special guests indeed. The two new basketball coaches here in Norman, Porter Moser and Jenny Baranchek. You guys were introduced to a standing ovation. We made our way over here. Everybody clapping and cheering for you. How did it feel to get that kind of reception? Well, I think it was awesome, but I think it was also Porter making everybody kind of do the wave as we were going. So, no, it was just awesome. That was great. Yeah, how did that feel? I mean, this is what you want. I mean, this is what Jenny and I, you, you want to be in a fan base that's so passionate, that's like that. And when they gave us that kind of welcome, that's the way Norman's been for the last two weeks to both of us. And it's just so appreciated by both of us. And you guys both got a chance to meet and chat with Lincoln Riley. How cool is it to be on this field and kind of take it all in Oklahoma football? Well, obviously Oklahoma football with the tradition, but then obviously just getting to meet Lincoln is amazing because he's just an awesome person. That's exactly what Porter just said. I mean, everybody here is just awesome, just to the core. What's the last couple of weeks been like for you? Recruiting. <laughs> just, it is nonstop recruiting, hiring a staff, building relationship with the current players. I mean, it's just been nonstop with, with that and building relationships with them. And what about for you? How have your first couple of weeks gone? Yeah, exactly the same, Maurice. You really want to just dive into the culture and the chemistry here with what we have and then also trying to recruit, trying to get a staff in place and all the rest of it. So. Well, thanks again for your time. And obviously, Sooner Nation, very excited to have you guys in Norman. So we appreciate your time. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Boomer Sooner. Toby, back up to you. Oh, those guys have been a lot of fun since they got to town. And you're looking at Ben Harris at quarterback for Oklahoma, the Carl Albert High School product, true freshman that's leading the offense on this possession. Spencer, you know college football inside out. Both of you guys are around it week in and week out. There's a lot of excitement about this team because they feel like this could be a year that they make a run at
needed another national championship. But there's a step to take there. If you're going to catch the Alabamas and the Clemsons of the world, what is that step? What's the gap that they got to fill in this year? Well, that's a great question, Justin. I don't know what your thoughts are on this, but I think when Oklahoma gets out of it, I'm going to call it not in a pejorative sense, but they get out of the cul-de-sac that is this conference. And when they get to those big teams, those physical teams that define the SEC play, man, you've got to go to another level altogether. And I think now, Dusty, you've been around Oklahoma more recently, more than I have. However, defensive pass rush presence is something that I see uh, a little bit that's going to take them to the next level. And I think Alex has done a fantastic job of acquiring the, the talent, and that's what Oklahoma needs to do. And if they can affect the quarterback, I think they're going to be that much more dangerous. I think, I think Spencer's exactly right, Toby. Being able to affect the quarterback, win the line of scrimmage against big physical opposing offensive lines. But the other aspect about this team, the length and size of defensive back. Mm -hmm. When we talk about Clemson, Alabama, Ohio State, those wide receivers with the speed, size they possess, I feel like this team is better positioned with the overall athleticism, size, length mm -hmm. that some of these defensive backs possess to be able to take on and compete with the likes of the teams we talked about. I think you're absolutely right. D.J. Graham, for me, is one of those examples. Converted wide receiver comes over. He's got great length, great natural talent. I talked to Alex a little bit about him when we called one of the games last year. He said that he's a natural athlete. Got to get the guy on the field. Playing with confidence at another level for him and, again, duplicating that leap is going to help this team out greatly. Jaden Knowles with a big play for the offense that has taken him down near the red zone. Now four and a half minutes to go here in the first half, trailing 27 to 3. Low pass is caught off the turf and down to around the 17 yard line. That's Marcellius Crutchfield. Justin Harrington came in to help on that tackle. He's an intriguing guy to me, fellas. 6'3", almost 220 pounds. They're playing him at corner. Now, last year, around this time, he tore his ACL, so he missed all of last year. But he's a guy that they're trying at corner, I think, can also play safety. Just his size, length, athleticism, like I talked about, Spencer. These are the type of bodies that Alex Grinch is fired up about, and I expect Justin Harrington to find his way on the field come next fall. Well, that's a great take because, you know, there's a, a kind of a, the, the metric of the game are just starting to define what are the requisite throws that the quarterback has to make. There's about five or six of them, but to Desi's point, if you can take away those ones that they're trying to get most with great length and size, then you can pretty much dicto dictate the flow in the course of a game, and, and it really becomes easier as a defensive coordinator when you take the strength away from a quarterback. Defensive stop there made by one of the new freshmen, Nathan Rollins Kabanga, six foot six out of Oregon. He's a fun story. NRK, as they call him, only played 10 games in high school. He was a basketball star, number 35 in the screen there. He's a basketball star who originally committed to Washington State to play basketball but was such a star in the one season he played on the football field, he ended up getting a football scholarship <laughs> at the University of Oklahoma. As a pass rusher, he's raw now. I mean, he's only played 10 games, but at 6'5", 6'6", somewhere in that range, they are very excited about his potential. Second and a country mile to go as Ben Harris dumps it out of the backfield and no gain. And so far, this game is being dominated, Dusty, by your defense. <laughs> Well, this is exactly what I think a lot of people wanted to see. There's been a lot of hype, a lot of praise about this defense. How are they going to show up and present themselves here today? And so far, so good, Toby. Oh, there's Nathan Rollins Kabanga. Going to try to get after Ben Harris here on third and 23. Harris to the back, out of the backfield. That's Knowles again, who takes it down to the 23, 24-yard line. And they'll try another long field goal here with the backup kicker, Zach Schmidt. It's a nice defensive look as a three-man rush, but with the spy kind of concept thrown in there and mixing it up a little bit. That's kind of cool. Loved to use that spy. Nick Benito utilized that aspect. You know, a lot of times he would spy and when nothing would come, he would add the rush late. Mm -hmm. He got himself a couple of nice sacks in that role a season ago. 41-yard field goal try is good for Zach Schmidt out of McGinnis High School. The home of Gabe Eicher. <laughs> and the offense is on the board. Spencer, it is always a Pleasure, thrill to my see friend. you, my man. Thanks for stopping always by the booth. Always good to be back with Great family. This guy's a stud right here. He Both is. of you guys are, he man. He is. Your Thanks, stars, Spencer. brother. More of the OU Spring Game coming up, brought to you by OU Health. Here's a look at the latest 
Big 12 championship rings. The Sooners got just this week. They've won six in a row. And there was a lot of bling there as we get back to action. A turnover. Sooners with a little razzle-dazzle. Mario Williams drops the football. And the defense has come up with a turnover. And they're off to the end zone to celebrate. <laughs> it's like picture taking time as a defense. Man, they're getting the crowd fired up. I think they may go into the crowd. I don't know. Yeah. It's just a Lambo leap here in Norman. That is a mosh pit of excitement. We know Alex Grinch loves his takeaways. Much better in that department, too, a year ago. Finished 19th in the country, led the Big 12 with 19 takeaways. Something that Alex wants to continue this defense to improve upon. Mario Williams there. He actually had some room out in front and just drops the football. Would have been great to see that speed showcase. But it was Josh Ellison with the penetration. Johnny on the spot, picks up the football. And Josh Ellison... Bowling. Is a name to remember, I would say, Toby, because yeah. you saw him flash some last year. He's had a phenomenal spring. I know Calvin Thibodeau has been really excited with how much he's taken his game to that next level. A lot of praise for Josh Ellison in the spring. He's the other junior college defensive lineman that came in with Perry on Winfrey, who was more hype around him perhaps a year ago. But Ellison seems to have had a big step forward this year as we take a look at our New faces on the Oklahoma defense coming into this season for Alex Grinch. Brought to you by OU Health. And Billy Bowman, I guess the defense won out on the battle for Billy Bowman <laughs> as he is going to play at Nickelback at least so far here in the spring. On the field right now, locking down Jeremiah Hall. Outstanding coverage down the field. It's Oklahoma secondary, nowhere to go with the football. And Billy Bowman, just a dynamic athlete. And, you know, Lincoln Riley told us playing nickel on the defensive side was going to give him a quicker opportunity to get on the field. And he's really stepped up. Also, Latrell McCutcheon, that's a name to remember. He's been fantastic at corner. The Austin product is very smooth, quality cover skills, and a guy that's going to have a chance to compete to play right away. Been very excited about Jordan Ukes as well. A lot of people, you know, kind of tabbed him as a raw athlete coming in, and he you know, had high praise from Alex Grinch when we talked to him a couple of days ago. One guy who was not featured on there, Key Lawrence, 12 playing safety right now, the Tennessee transfer. They've been extremely excited about what he's brought to the table, and I was talking to Benny Wiley, Toby, and he told me that Key had a 42-inch vertical wow. to go with his six foot one um, size, so a guy to definitely keep an eye on the back end of that defense. Key Lawrence, 12 out of Tennessee. That's a bullfrog having trouble right there as Delarian Turner Yell breaks up the pass. And second and 20 coming up for Spencer Rattler in the Oklahoma offense. Now trailing 30 to 6 after the turnover. Offense needs a play. Shot down the middle, a little high, intended for Hall. It'll be third and long. And how about some of the new faces now on the Oklahoma offense? Mario Williams, uh, Lincoln Riley used the words jaw-dropping. Mm -hmm. Freshman on offense when he talks about his quickness. Got a chance to be special. Quickness is exactly the word with him. Dynamic player who just continues to make big plays in what you also like. Everyone says he's got such a good vibe, good energy. Cody Jackson, another guy they're really excited about. And we've seen Caleb Williams here already. And high praise from Spencer Tillman about the young freshman quarterback as well. On third and 20, Jeremiah Hall picks up a big chunk of it. It'll be fourth and six with just over a minute to go here in the first half. Jaden Davis and Brian Meade combining on the tackle. And none of the big chunk plays been available down the field so far, and the Sooners will punt it away. And that's got to put Lincoln Riley in some conflict, right? Because the offensive competitive nature of him wants his offense to do well. And he even told us in the moment he gets upset. But then when he takes a step back, he has to remember the reason we're probably not doing well offensively is because that defense is stepping up, which now as a head coach, he can step back and say, you know what? That's pretty darn good as well. well I agree with you. And I think he is playing it well today because have you seen what he's wearing? I have See not. The, the sweatshirt Lincoln Riley has on today? Speed D. Ah, <laughs> there you go. I'm coaching the offense, but I want you to know I'm with you on the other side of the field as well. Well played by the head man. 
So well the punt played. is three more points for the defense, and I don't know, this may be insurmountable at this point. We're not yet to halftime, but it's 33-6. to six. And that ring we briefly showed you before, the latest of now 50 conference championships for the Oklahoma Sooners, the most all-time. That's not bad, right? That's where you want to be. That's okay. I've had a couple of those championships, and I was going to bring my ring from 2002 until I got a look at what these new rings look like, and I was embarrassed. A little bigger? Man, little bigger. Little bigger. holy cow. <laughs> you got more ice than me. That's pretty good company right there. Sooners this year will go in pursuit of their seventh. Here's Perry on Winfrey's Twitter feed. It says, Doc says apply ice <laughs> to that pinky. And uh, that's, that's, that's the kind of ice. serious ice. Yeah, that's a knuckle he's got to get oh, it over there. I don't know what happened with Holy Perry. Yeah. I saw that video and said, oh, I'm going to keep my championship ring at home. Throw downfield. Caleb Williams finds Drake Stoops. Hard tackle by Bryson Washington. Like seeing Caleb Williams on the move throw the ball with such accuracy out in front. Nice job, as always, by Drake Stoops, sure-handed receiver, always finding a way to make those tough competitive catches. Caleb Williams now four for five. He's looking deep, far sideline, incomplete. Flag is down. Looking for Hazelwood. Kendall Dennis going to be flagged for pass interference. I think it's imperative that Jaden Hazelwood takes that next step next year, Toby. You know, we've talked about, obviously, Marvin Mims, a household name at this point. The expectations for Mario Williams, but they don't have size. Jaden Hazelwood was the number one receiver coming out a couple of years ago. He's coming off the knee injury, still trying to get himself back, rounded into shape. But the talent he possesses, if he can put it all together, get over that knee injury, they need his size and mismatch capability on the outside next season. We will not see Theo Weiss today. A lob toward Hazelwood again, far sideline. One-handed grab, and he holds it in! Hazelwood, the play of the day so far! On cue for Jaden Hazelwood. That's the talent he possesses as he holds in a one-handed, left-handed grab on the far side. Outstanding concentration on the sidelines by Hazelwood. Under 30 seconds to go. The Sooners quickly to the line. A running play with Marcus Major. And Lincoln Riley will take a timeout. Here's another look at this catch. Starts with the left. Finishes it with the right. Just love the concentration right there on the sidelines. Well done. Jordan Hazelwood. Or excuse me, Jaden Hazelwood with the play of the day so far. He was hampered with injuries in 2020. Only those four catches for 65 yards. But a former five-star wide receiver who they think has a chance to have a breakout year here in 2021. Let's go downstairs. Jessica Cootie, speaking of stars, she's with maybe the biggest one, physically biggest one in the house today. Jess? No doubt about it. Creed Humphrey back in Oklahoma Gaylor Family Memorial Stadium. How does it feel to be on this field and not be suited up? Yeah, it definitely feels weird. Um, yeah, obviously I miss it. You know, this universe means so much to me. But, uh, you know, it's a new chapter in my life, and I'm excited. Yeah, big weekend coming up for you this weekend. How has the process been for you? It's been great. It's been really smooth, you know, just training and doing interviews and stuff and meeting with different teams. It's been really good, very smooth. Well, you're going to add to the long line of offensive linemen that are going to get drafted. What is it about Bill Beaton, though, and how he prepares you guys for this moment? Yeah, uh, you know, there's not a better coach in the country as far as player development than Coach Beaton, though. Uh, he's... He's just so amazing what he does. You know, everybody buys in when they come here. Uh, he's just such a great coach with a great track record. So, yeah, he's very hard to beat. I think he's the best in the country for it. Last thing for you, obviously, big position battle to replace your shoes here at center. Whoever it may be that wins the job, how much confidence do you have in that guy? Uh, I've got a ton of confidence. I know they're all... Right on cue. Right at it. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, whoever, whoever it is going to be, I've got a ton of confidence in it. So... Thank you so much. Guys. First touchdown of the day for the offense. Caleb Williams to Jackson Sumlin. 12 yards. Wide open in the back of the end zone. A little bit of a bust there, I'm sure. 
Alex Grinch will talk to his secondary over the sidelines. First touchdown pass we've seen from Caleb Williams. Like how he worked through his progressions, found the open man, fires a dart into the end zone. I was talking with Joe John Finley earlier today. He was praising the work ethic of Jackson Sumlin. Said that he's really got quality speed. He's worked his way into getting on the field and pays it off with a touchdown. I'm sure Papa is smiling somewhere here in the stadium today. He's here. He's uh, thrilled. Here's to take another look at it. Sumlin playing the H-back tight end position. We have not seen Braden Willis or Austin Stogner today. But he found himself open right near Creed Humphrey in the back line of the end zone. And from a competitiveness standpoint, the offense needed that. As yes. we are 16 seconds away from halftime, and they tighten it up a bit, 33-13. That guy's having a good debut on Owen Field. Caleb Williams, 6 for 7 for 51 yards and a touchdown. And we saw, we've seen the speed, too, right on the zone read. That element of running with the football keeps defenses so honest out there, keeps you on your toes and alert at all times. Impressive start for his Sooner career for number 13. And we are at halftime. We'll take a timeout. 33-13 defense on top at intermission. You're watching the 2021 Sooner Spring Game presented by OU Health. K-9 is in the house today, guys. Kenneth Murray fresh off a great rookie season. How would you evaluate your first year in the league? Well, I feel like it's pretty good. I, mean, I feel like I got better week to week. I did out over our goal, so... Uh, you know, we came out, you know, uh, didn't have the best season that we wanted to, but uh, I feel like I got better every week. Talk to you right when you first got down here on the field and you said, I miss it. What makes this place so special being here in Norman? Uh, it's so special. It's just the, the culture, the whole city, you know, is just such a, a close-knit town. And, you know, the university, the football atmosphere, and just the fans, everything. So, uh, you know, definitely miss it, you know, now being out in L.A. And you have developed quite a very close bond and relationship with Brian Odom. Didn't work with him for very long. What was it about Coach Odom that you clicked with him so well so quickly? Yeah, you know, he was a guy that, you know, came in and pushed me hard. He came in and made me better. And, you know, we just developed a bond that was just inseparable, to be honest. You know, he's still my favorite coach to this day. So, um, you know, I got mad love for Coach Odom. And, uh, give us somebody that maybe we could be watching out for. Might not be on the field today, but who we can maybe look out for. You expect big things from in the fall. I mean, really everybody, to be honest. I've been hearing so much great things about, you know, the defense and the offense. So, um, you know, I just say everybody, but I, I've heard a lot about my guy Caleb Kelly coming back and Deshaun White. So, you know, definitely got to stick with my LBs, you know, I hear they're coming really well. We've seen so much buy-in from the defensive players with Coach Grinch's system. Why does Coach Grinch get such buy-in out of his guy? Oh, man, because he's, he's just a great, phenomenal coach. I mean, you know, he, he has a message that, that is, you know, second to none. So, you know, he, he's able to get guys to buy-in and be able to show them what they need to do to be great. K-9, we appreciate your time. Great to see you back in Norman. No problem. Thank you. Guys, back up to you. Rattler deep looking for Mario. There's a wrestling match for the football, and the offense comes down with it at the 20-yard line. Nobody wants to let go. DJ Graham and Mario Williams. Tie goes to the offense. No deep shots in this game. No more. Man. First play of the game, little play action, take a shot down the field. Strong hands to bring that in by Mario Williams in his first big play of the afternoon. Nice throw there by Spencer Rattler. Rattler 5 for 10 now passing on the day. And looks like we have a defensive injury or maybe a cramp as DJ Graham is going to take himself off the field. Let's take one more look at this grab. In coverage, fourth catch of the day for Mario Williams. I mean, that's just that's just kind of a fight for it, isn't it? DJ Graham in good position with his hands on the football, and Mario Williams able to get enough and bring down the catch. It's a 50-yard pickup. Rattler with his feet in the open field will sit down. A zone read, two-yard loss. It's an element that Lincoln mentioned to us. They want to continue to improve upon him as a runner. He talked about just overall physically getting him a little bit stronger and in better shape. We'll see come next fall if that is another element that defenses have to deal with with Spencer. Second and 13. Quick pass out. It's Williams again to the 15, to the 10. There you see that quickness. It'll be first and goal. 
Mario Williams, also a fantastic baseball player, by the way. Mm -hmm. He intends on playing for the Sooner baseball team next year. An outfielder with power and a great arm. Does that sound familiar? We had another one of those guys that also played football around here a couple of years back. He got drafted pretty high, didn't yeah, not he? Bad. He did well for himself. Rattler, back shoulder incomplete, looking for Mims at the goal line. I love this coverage right here. This is a great matchup to watch. And Marvin Mims now playing in the slot. They're moving him around, going to force defenses to identify where he is on the field. And this is true freshman Billy Bowman. Man-to-man -man coverage out of the slot. Look at that great position he has, Toby. Gets that hand in front. Fantastic job by the true freshman against one of the premier wide receivers in the Big 12. Second and goal. There you see Billy Bowman. Five foot ten out of Denton, Texas. Rattler pass, looking for Mims again, knocked down. Caleb Kelly got a hand on it. It'll be third and goal. Caleb Kelly, the rapper there, eyes on the quarterback, gets his hands up in the throwing lane and gets the pass breakup. Well done by the six-year super senior coming back. And Brian Odom was almost giddy talking about where he's taken his game here coming off the back-to-back -back ACL tears so far this spring. Excited and happy for the opportunities potentially this year for Caleb Kelly. A member of the 2016 signing class, Caleb Kelly. Rattler looks the end zone near sidelines. It was nearly intercepted, intended for Stogner. Broken up by Bryson Washington. And Lincoln Riley will settle for a field goal try. Well, Stogner's got that big body at 6'6", 255. He is a red zone weapon, used his body to his advantage, but it's fantastic positioning by Bryson Washington, the red shirt freshman, getting inside well done actually becomes a receiver almost completes the interception there on the sideline well done by stogner to get the ball out short drive for burkich 24 yard attempt and he's two for two and the gap has been tightened it's now 27 16 with just over 13 minutes to play. But if you're Alex Grinch, you got to love the mentality of this defense, right? First play out of the gate, you give up the deep shot, but you come back and you keep this Oklahoma offense out of the end zone yet again. It's well done. Bend but don't break style of defense. And it also just shows, put that big play behind you, right? They're going to hit a big shot. Let's put it behind us. Let's come back. Let's play defense. It's well done to keep them out of the end zone and force the field goal. And there are some guys we're not seeing today, like Isaiah Thomas, yes. like Jalen Redman, mm -hmm. who are going to be big factors, obviously, for this team as well. No question. Isaiah Thomas took such a huge step last year as a pass rusher, and that's only going to continue heading into next year. I am really excited. I was telling you on the production call last night about Jalen Redman. He's added some size, and he's, he's really one of the best pure pass rushers from the interior. He opted out last year. He's coming back this year. He ended the 2019 season with a flurry when you go back to that Big 12 championship game and what he was able to do. I think his presence inside as a pass rusher is going to be such a key for the Sooners defense getting after opposing quarterbacks. And we see the improvement made year by year under Alex Grinch. Caleb Williams back on the field. Starting from the 30-yard line. And he starts by handing it off to Eric Gray, who swallowed up immediately. Easton Reeves with the tackle. That's what this defense creates, Toby. Penetration, the pre-snap, post-snap movement to, cre to get penetration, create negative plays. As good as you'll find, stopping the run, tackles for loss with what they do pre and post snap to confuse opposing offensive lines. Play action this time. Williams across the middle. It's caught Sumlin again near sideline, and he's got the first down. Jackson Sumlin working on a big day. I like how Caleb Williams steps up in the pocket and locates his open receiver and hits him in stride. Sumlin has the one touchdown so far for the Oklahoma offense. Takes it out to the 43-yard line. 
Quick toss out, far sideline, caught again. Devin Staten breaking tackles. Another first down and into defensive territory. A gain of 12 before being chased out by Davis and Mukes. Devin Staten out of Katy, Texas. Caleb Williams once again has the Oklahoma offense on the move. And off this time, Kennedy Brooks. There's the patented patience behind his lead blockers, and he gets a big gain. That looks familiar right there. It's so good to see him back on the field, Toby. He was obviously missed a season ago. Patience is always the first word that comes out of my mouth to describe Kennedy Brooks. He's never in too big of a hurry, and he's got that little bit of burst. When he sees the scene, he hits it. Nice job following his blocker as he allows Parks to get out in front. A nice game. He looks even more patient with the black Jordans on. Yeah, he does. Second and three. Zone read keeper. Lots of room for Caleb Williams to the 25 and touchdown there by Jordan Mukes. Reggie Grimes is still trying to figure out who has the football. It's well done at the mesh point, keeping it riding gray for as long as he possibly can, then pulling it last second. Defender had no idea as Caleb Williams hit the open field to pick up the first down. A 14-yard gain. And Caleb Williams has guided the Oklahoma offense near the red zone again. That's his fourth carry for 34 yards today. Pass over the middle. Caught at the 19. Brian Darby with his first reception. Lincoln Riley said he was eager to see how Caleb Williams would look on the stage mm -hmm. today. I would say he's passing the test. Thriving in this environment, I would say, Toby. Just over 10 minutes to go in this one. Offense trying to make it a one-score game. Handoff near side. Big room. Eric Gray makes a move. Touchdown. Zero for six. 19 yards for the Tennessee transfer and a move at the five to tap it off. Well, it's a nice hole off the left side, Toby, and the vision I talked about earlier. Oh, a little make or miss in the open field. Put the foot in the ground, let him fly right by. That's exactly what Sooner fans wanted to see from the Tennessee transfer, Eric Gray. I know DeMarco Murray has been elated about his place since he's gotten on campus. Nice way to cap off a quality drive for the Sooner offense. That was fun. Eric Gray, 19-yard touchdown run. And the extra point try is up and good, and it's a four-point game with under 10 to go. Caleb Kelly now 9 for 10, passing for 85 yards. But it's that guy, number zero, that puts six on the board for Lincoln Riley's offense. It's the OU Spring Game presented by OU Health. Well, Lincoln Riley's offense has made this thing interesting with 9.55 to go. It's 27-23. Offense takes over deep in their own territory for this possession. And it's Micah Bowens at quarterback. His first pass incomplete. Bowens, the Penn State transfer. Redshirt freshman. He was a top 10 dual threat quarterback out of high school. Had huge, huge high school stats at Bishop Gorman in Las Vegas, which was obviously the same high school as DeMarco Murray. Bowens across the middle, finds his target this time out across the 20-yard line, Colt Atkinson, near a first down. Good to see 20 Clayton Smith flying in there late, one of the 
more highly touted recruits from this latest Sooners recruiting class for Alex Grinch. Got great length coming off the edge. You're going to see him in that rush position. And I think he's a guy that's going to have a chance as he gets more acclimated to the level of competition to be a, a real quality rusher for the Sooners defense. Third and one. Bowens with the keeper. Finds a gap and gets the first down marker to move the chains. D.J. Graham touched him down. 27-23 defense out in front. Two touchdowns in this game. Caleb Williams to Jackson Sumlin in the first half. 12-yard pass and a 19-yard touchdown run by Eric Gray. The defense has forced one turnover so far. Josh Ellison falling on a Mario Williams fumble. Handoff Knowles with a lot of room to the 40 to midfield and he's upended at the 44 yard line. Jaden Knowles second big play. Jaden Knowles only five foot seven Toby but man is he quick nice cut open space off to the left side a big pickup for the red shirt junior out of Kennedale. 32 yard pickup. Right up the gut by Knowles. Bowens through the air. Completed far sideline. Major Melson with the catch. And here another first down. It's Jamal Morris there on the tackle. Converted safety into linebacker. He was there last season, but didn't get many reps. More of a scout team player. Played some special teams as well, but really taking a nice step so far here this spring to continue to add depth for Brian Odom in that linebacking room. Second and one. Bowens throws again. Melson again. First down. Big Ooh. hits. Ooh. Wow. Ooh. DJ Graham. Hello. Pat's popping down there on the field, Toby. That's how a cornerback comes up. Lays the wood a little bit. Ooh. <laughs> Big collision down there. Major hit, you might say. <laughs> From the 29, we have solved the mystery, by the way, of the disappearing six points on the scoreboard. Apparently, points were awarded when the offense was forced to punt as we see the snap get by Bowens, and this play will be halted. False start. The forced punts in the first half were apparently not supposed to be points for the defense. They didn't get a fourth down stop. Points were put on the scoreboard a couple of times when they shouldn't have been. So thus, the 33-13 score at halftime was dialed back to 27-13. If the offense rallies to win, I'm sure this will be a hot topic for debate. Out Alex Grinch. Outstanding investigative work you've done there, T-Row. Well, I, I, think, Very impressed. I think maybe Cootie got to the bottom of oh. that for us. I'm not sure. Maybe our producer, Grant Wade. And keeper that time by Bowens. Back to the original line of scrimmage. Delayed quarterback lead there. Getting out in front. Nice pickup. Clock winding down. We're building toward late game, spring game drama. The Penn State transfer, Micah Bowens. Trying to put the offense in front. Pass out is caught, but a tackle immediately. Marcellius Crutchfield on the catch. It'll be third down. Joshua Eaton, the stop. I like the plant and drive by Joshua Eaton, and he's another one of these guys. He's six foot two. He's 185 pounds. He's long. He's athletic. A guy that has had a nice spring, and you'd love to see plays like that give this staff confidence. They can put him out there and trust he's going to do a nice job. Third and seven. Flag is down. Bowens takes a deep shot, incomplete, looking for Crutchfield. And this is going to be offsides on Clayton Smith, I believe. I would say third down, no, you're probably going to get a hard count, but Toby, I'd be lying if I didn't say that I jumped offsides more than once on third down situations. Nah. Not that I remember those things or yeah. anything. Yeah. 
I'm sure it was taken with yeah. a grain of salt yeah, by the defensive coaches. Yeah. I'm sure they didn't care. Not at all. Third and two. Handoff, looking for running room across the 20. That's Todd Hudson who takes a big shot, a yard shy of the first down. And a big decision here for Lincoln Riley on fourth and one. You got to go for it here, right? I mean, come on. Give the defense a chance to get some points, right? He's going. We didn't come here to kick field goals, Toby. If he fails to pick it up, it's a seven-point lead for the defense. There is only five minutes to play. A little zone read action here. It is a keeper by Bowens around the left side. He's got the first down. He's got more to the 10. He dives for the pylon. Oh, we've got a lot of conversation. You're ruining the drama of the moment, Zebras. <laughs> is it a touchdown? Oh, I guess he stepped out at the one-yard line. Nice athleticism, athleticism we're seeing from Micah Bowens. Quality read. Gets outside. You see the speed to the sidelines. And... Hmm. Looked like he did step out at the one. Where was the football, though? That close enough. It's a spring, spring game. Good call. That's a spring game. Close enough. From the one-yard line. Up the middle, Todd Hudson pushed back. I might have lost a yard on that one. Mr. Hudson ran into a wall. No movement in the interior. That Oklahoma defensive line. Laron Stokes, Corey Roberson in there. Laron Stokes been such a just a key cog, but such a solid guy, right? A guy you can trust, you can put in there. Did some really good football over the last couple of years. Another guy who just adds depth to this defensive line. Second and goal from the two. Knowles up the middle and he's into the end zone. Touchdown. Jaden Knowles. And the offense pushes in front. Two-yard touchdown run, Jaden Knowles, who's had a nice day. Key block there, 79, Daryl Simpson pulls around, secures a block on the second level, and Knowles powers his way into the end zone. Fun competitive drive there. Between those two Had sides. A fourth down try in there? Yeah. Extra point by Burkich makes it a three point game, 30 to 27. With four of six to go, we'll take a timeout. Down the stretch we come, the 2021 Oklahoma Spring Game. Presented by OU Health. coming in his third year, like, you can see a difference. You're getting better players, bigger, faster defensive backs. So, like, you know, it's time to see that shift. And I really think uh, the defense is going to be, like, the stronghold of our team this year. So I'm, I'm excited for them. I'm excited for the team. excited for Coach Riley. Like, they got big things ahead. And big week for you ahead. How do you feel going into this weekend's draft? Oh, uh, man, I'm real confident. Um, you know, I'm real happy. Um, just earlier, you know, I thank Coach Riley again. Like, uh, I showed him my ring and thanked him for coming to St. Louis, you know, coming to recruit me and just put me in this position. So I'm just excited for everything I got in and I'm ready. What about developing you as a player? Why did coming to Oklahoma prepare you for this? Um, I'll probably say just the things we do different. Uh, you're held to a different standard here as a player on and off the field and um, really just like the way the coaches push us. Coach Riley, uh, the way you push us off the field to be better players, uh, better men, the way we develop in the weight room. Like, it's just a whole different standard here. And once you come here, like, you understand it. We talk to your friends from other programs, like, you know the difference what we do at OU. It's a, re it's a reason why we win as much. And you got your Big 12 championship ring, right? Uh, the one for every finger, right? You got one size for every finger? Yeah, I got one size for my my three fingers, so I got my piggy, I got my index, and I got my middle. So, you know, just kind of doing it like that. Well, Ronnie, best of luck this week. We'll look forward to seeing where you head. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Thank you, guys. Guys, back up to you. And while Ronnie and Jess were talking, a safety for the OU defense, Dusty. Nowhere to go inside. I actually thought 
Mikey Henderson might have gotten out. That ball looked like it was out before he was forced back. But you know what? Being the defensive guy I am, I'm fine with the safety <laughs> call. Looked good to me, but no movement up front for that Oklahoma offensive line. The likes of Ethan Downs in there. We also saw Isaiah Coe. Juco transfers come in, done a nice job so far. Ethan Downs, number 40, another true freshman who's really wowed coaches so far with his work ethic, his toughness, how hard he's played. A couple of guys in there helping clog up any running lanes to create that safety. A couple of Western Oklahoma freshmen there, Ethan Downs out of Weatherford. And Reed Lindsey was in on that play as well out of Clinton High School. Brian Mead, a part of that safety. So it's a one-point game now. 30 to 29. The offense cannot afford a turnover. They cannot afford a safety, obviously, as Mikey Henderson pushes it out to the 10-yard line. Keeper by Caleb Williams. And he'll bounce it outside, gets the first down marker before stepping out. Well, he's been impressive really in every way today. Doesn't he look comfortable yeah. with the football? I mean, so in control of everything, smooth as a runner. We've seen the accuracy from the pocket, on the move as a thrower. There's a reason this young man was the number one overall dual threat quarterback in, in high school football coming out. Other aspect to him that I've been told his leadership, like he's just showed up and want to work and get better each and every day. And we saw the leadership helping bring together this past recruiting class. He was one of the key cogs yeah. in that. And just seems like he's got all the different ingredients to be one of those next great quarterbacks here at Oklahoma. Mikey Henderson stacked up as we hit the two-minute mark in this one. Like that he's moved to running back, T. Rowe. I think he's got outstanding skill with the football in his hand, just natural runner with the football. He's never really played running back. He's been working on his ability and pass protection, but I think there's going to be some opportunities in what's becoming a little bit of a crowded backfield back there when you think of Eric Gray, Kennedy Brooks, M Marcus Major, and also Mikey Henderson. Mikey gets it again. Made a lot of big plays last year in limited action both as a ball carrier and as a receiver. I'm sure he'll, as a flag is down on this play, be used in both fashions again this year, regardless of where they line him up. Kind of a Swiss Army knife, right? They do it all. He's H back, tight end, six foot two. It's a tough matchup. Catches the ball clean. Another guy of, of import, I would say, at left tackle right now, he's got Wanye Morris. The uh, third of that Tennessee trio of transfers, extremely athletic offensive tackles, got all the tools. It's flashed here in the spring, and well, Beatonbo told me he's put in the extra work. He wants to be good. He wants to get it down as quickly as possible. Jaden Knowles' big day continues as he takes it out to the 35. Were you a uh, boys to men fan, or was that before your time? Oh, I can do some boys to men, boys absolutely. To men, yeah. yeah. Wanya Morris named after. Wanya Morris, a boys to men fan. Look at you dropping knowledge on here. When it comes to boys to men, I'm pretty much the standard bearer around here. Are you uh, ready to uh, break out of the song as this clock ticks down? I am not. I am not prepared for that today. We are under a minute to go. It's the Todd Hudson and Jaden Knowles show at this point at running back. It's almost the end of the road. Oh, look at if you. you will. Look at you. Clayton Smith, the tackle. Top 10 player out of the state of Texas, Clayton Smith. There's a good look at Todd Hudson from League City, Texas. Nice job getting up underneath and then getting vertical. I think barring a turnover on this play, the offense has got a victory. Big carry into the secondary goes Hudson. Near sideline. Oh, they went for the strip. That was a good attempt by Kendall Dennis to knock it loose. He was unsuccessful, though, with nine seconds to go. And Lincoln Riley, I think, is saying that's enough. There's another look at the carry by Todd Hudson. His offense got the win. Why go back out there and put yourself... <laughs> In any kind of harm's way. And the teams are coming together. 
It'll go down as a one-point win for the offense, 30 to 29. Although the defense had 33 points at one point in this game, we're not going to make too big of a deal out of that. We'll let Grinch and Riley work that out in the post-game press conferences. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be heated. And Riley trying to call everybody together. What'd you think, Dusty? You know, I, I thought that it was it was good just to see some football back out here. You know, everything wasn't as sharp and as crisp maybe as Coach Riley would like to see. I was impressed early on, especially. We got a little more good on good with the way the secondary was locking down. Some of the wide receivers from Oklahoma wasn't, you know, many open players for Spencer Rattler to distribute the football. But for me, the big takeaway, Caleb Williams. I mean, I, I just I thought he was as advertised. You saw his athleticism, his accuracy with the football. To me, if we're looking for a, a, a guy who maybe stole the show today, I think it's the true freshman out of um, Washington, D.C., Caleb Williams. And we're getting some sprints in here at the end. Get a little conditioning work in. We'll take our final time out and wrap up the 2021 Oklahoma spring game. When we come back, offense wins it by one. with his team as the offense wins a come from behind thriller today in the 2021 OU spring game by the final of 30 to 29. Toby Rowland and Dusty Dvorak back with you here inside the press box above Owen Field and uh, that was an entertaining format. First and foremost, I yeah. thought that was a fun way of doing it. Absolutely. We had a close competitive game yeah. down to the end. Defense gets a lead. The offense has to bring them back. That was fun. I enjoyed it. Let's take a look at some of the highlights that played out today on the field below us as the defense was spotted a 21 to nothing lead, and then they built that lead early on. The offense had a hard time getting going. Here's the fumble by Mario Williams, and it's fallen on by Josh Ellison. A little gift there from Mario, unable to hold on to the football. Nice penetration by Josh Ellison. Guy who's really taking that next step so far in the spring. That added points for the defense, but the offense got going. Caleb Williams finds Jackson Sumlin on the 12-yard touchdown pass. I love working through his progressions, finds the open target. And a dive in the end zone, 10 of 11 today for Caleb Williams. What a showing. 27-13 at halftime. Second half, Eric Gray announces himself to Sooner Nation. Vision, and in the open field, making that initial defender miss. That safety had no chance. Nice start to his tenure in the Sooner uniform. Well, I'm kind of digging a running back at zero. You Looks like good. that look? Yeah, I, I like it a lot. And Jaden Knowles with the two-yard score would put the offense in front for good, 30-27. to 27. Knowles had several big plays today. That's the score. Here's the safety. Final points of the game. Came here late in the game. Brian Mead and friends stacking up Mikey Henderson. Two points for the defense. That made it 30-29. to 29. Star of the day, Dusty, you say it's the true freshman quarterback, the five-star Caleb Williams. Tough to argue. 10 of 11, 99 yards, the touchdown we've already seen. Also five rushes, 42 yards. And, you know, a lot of times we'll see athletic quarterbacks. Lincoln Riley gets him involved early with the run, then a timing throw to the outside. Got himself comfortable in rhythm. And I really did not think that he put on one heck of a show here this afternoon. 141 all-purpose yards, composure, maturity, I thought, on the field today. He looked really good. My favorite play right here. Pressure inside, gets outside the pocket, locates Drake Stoops for a nice pickup. Going to be honest with you, I feel a little bit, how about that catch by mm. Jaden Hazelwood? I uh, feel a little bad for the defense today. I thought maybe throughout the course of the day they had the better of it. It's a shame they come up on the short end of the score. Might need to reevaluate the scoring system. But defensively, I thought Oklahoma played well. Especially in the back end of the defense. When they were going against the number one Oklahoma offense, I thought there was a lot of tight coverage, contested passes. We see there Caleb Kelly getting there immediately. We've talked a lot about the secondary. I thought they stepped up and showed really well here this afternoon. Pass breakup by Kendall Dennis. More defensive highlights for you. Got to stop here. Second half action. There's the fumble again. Josh Ellison, you mentioned it during the broadcast. Dusty, this is a guy that the defensive coaches have raved about in the spring. Billy Bowman also five, playing at the nickel. Had a couple of really nice 
coverages out there in man-to-man -man situations. Good penetration there. Jamal Morris, we talked about him coming from safety, now finding a home at linebacker. It's Isaiah Cole with the penetration, the flex after the big TFL. And there's the safety one more time. This wraps it up for spring practice, or at least a spring game. This is what we're building toward, though. Here's your schedule. The upcoming 2021 season schedule starts in New Orleans, Dusty. That'll be fun down at Tulane. They've got a quality team. That, that will be no walk in the park. I think the one that myself and so many are fired up for, what, the Huskers coming back yeah. to Norman. 50-year anniversary, I believe, of the game of the century. That's going to be fun to have a friendly face back in Big 12 country. That's going to be so great to see that block in and that interlocking OU and those uniforms back on the field together here inside historic Gaylord Family Oklahoma Memorial Stadium. Next to the last game of the regular season, Iowa State in a rematch of last year's Big 12 championship game, and then it wraps up with Bedlam this year in Stillwater. That'll do it for our coverage of the 2021 Oklahoma football spring game. The offense wins it by one. For Dusty Dvorak and Jessica Cootie, I'm Toby Rowland. We'll see you in the fall. Boomer Sooner, everybody.